Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 24 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Last episode, we got a bunch of cool stuff taken care of, and this episode, we gotta get into some automation. There's a lot I want to accomplish today. Um, I would like to, by the end of the episode, have fully automated my seed and oil production to the point where I don't have to worry about it ever running out of uh, canola oil or crystallized seeds or any of that good stuff. Uh, so with that in mind, we have a lot to do. The other thing I need to mention is we're getting close to the 72 RS a tick that we can have on this controller network. We're, so we're currently powering this using this wireless RF transmitter, which is doing fine. It's okay. It's not bad. I've seen worse. Uh, it does 80 RF a tick. That's the max it can support. And actually, I came down here earlier, and with my speed upgrades inside this solder, we're using exactly 80 RS a tick. Like, we're literally just on the border of running out of RS. Um, and I think if I, like, extract items from the network, does that use power? No, okay, cool, so that's good. Um, but long story short, like, one more cable or something, right? Like, one more little nuance to this network, and we're gonna be out of power. So we gotta keep that in mind. Um, the other thing I'm probably gonna need to do is sleep through the night, so let's come back. Oh yeah, I knew there was something else I wanted to mention. Uh, I wanted to mention that we are currently running on 1.2.0, the beta version uh, of the Direwolf 20 pack. I've added Pam's Harvest Craft. A lot of people ask me for Pam's. Uh, so I said, you know what? Sure, why not? Definitely add Pam's. It's a cool mod for those who like cooking and lots of different types of food. Um, and obviously has better uh, food options for you guys. So uh, we've got the canola press. We've got actually a decent amount of canola in here. Um, we're actually doing all right with canola. I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, and down here, oh, there's our problem. We are so out of seeds, guys, like super duper out of seeds. That is gonna be big time a problem soon. So let's get automating, shall we? So there's a couple things we need to do. One, I'd like to auto craft things with our refined storage system. Two, I'd like to automate this atomic reconstructor so that I can turn seeds into crystallized seeds. Three, uh, empowered seeds, which, you know, we're gonna automate this guy. So lots to do, let's get started. Uh, in order to get going, we're going to need to have a crafter from refined storage. This is the block, wherever it is, there it is, uh, that allows us to auto craft things. In order to make this, we're going to need advanced processors, construction cores, and destruction cores. We are quite a ways away from having what we need for that. So let's get some diamonds. Um, I'm gonna get six of them for now. We're gonna get some redstone, and we're also gonna get some silicon, some printed silicon, and we're gonna go down into our basement and uh, cook up what we need to cook up to get this going. So luckily I've got, you know, this nice thing going on here. How are we doing? Literally on the edge of how much power we can support on the network. And as soon as we have this crafter, we're gonna be in trouble. So removing speed upgrades will get us a little bit of a buffer, but we're gonna absolutely need to run some cabling down here, like ASAP. Probably gonna wind up clearing out this path over to the other side, because there's a capacitor over there I can tap into. Should be fine, should be. Um, so those are some advanced processors. We're also going to need the iron versions, aren't we? So let's get some, I think they're called printed basic processors. We actually have a few, so that's kind of awesome. Uh, let's just toss them in here and grab a few. So one of the first things I'm gonna to wanna to do, let's get rid of this solderer, and I'm probably gonna wind up moving this one down. Okay, uh, we're only gonna really need one of these, um, cause speed upgrades make things just lovely. So now that we've got at least the basics, let's go back up into our main area here and craft that crafter. So we're gonna need two construction cores two, and two destruction cores, one, two, and then we should be groovy. Cool, so we should be able to make two crafters now, one, and provided that we get another casing, but we need more quartz and rich iron. Remember when I told you we're gonna need a lot of that stuff? Remember when I made a lot of it, and I was like, yeah, we're gonna want this? Yeah, we want it. All right, so crafters are cool. Two things we can do with crafters, okay? I'll probably have my auto crafting system down here somewhere. Um, so let's see, uh, do we have any cables? Yes, cool. Uh, we might wanna clear out an area for 
auto crafting. Um, so this was going to be my wall of storage drawers, I said, right? Where we're just going to have a handful of storage drawers that'll be useful for storing things that we don't want clogging up this. If that's the case, where should I put all my crafters? So I think if I knock out this wall, then I should be cool for crafting. So let's do that. And we will wind up putting machines in there for auto crafting with as well. Um, but to knock that wall out, I'm going to want my excavator and my hammer. So let's come back in a minute when I'm ready to, or after I've knocked down that wall. All right, guys, the beauty of editing. Love it. Uh, so obviously like there's gonna be cables and wires running around here. It's a basement, it's fine. Like I don't want the basement to look nice. I want the basement to be functional. So I'm not gonna worry a whole lot about cables and stuff. Um, this guy, chilling right around 77 RSA tech usage. I don't know why we lost usage, but we did. So I'm not gonna complain. I'm totally cool with that. Um, so let's have, so let's, let, let's envision how this is gonna look, right? We will probably have many machines along the wall here that we will be auto crafting with. I don't know what they will all be. Um, let's put it like here is like where we're gonna be, right? So that's seven machines, right? One, two, three, one, two, three. That should be a good starting point, right? Um, let's make sure that we have a good amount of light going on up here too. I kind of just haphazardly put lights around the place. That should be fine. Cool, that works, right? Just to make sure we're good. Um, and then we'll probably expand out in that direction. Over here might be a wall of like these crafters, right? So the way these crafters work is pretty cool. First, we're gonna need to hook them up with power. And I'm gonna do, you know, a little cabling underground. So we should have cables. I will do what cabling underground I can. Let's put it that way, okay? And I want to be cognizant of my RF a tick usage on this, right? So boom, we've got a crafter. That is a vanilla crafting table, and we can put recipes in there. Usage 79 RS a tick. Again, not sure where the other three went that we had going on before, but good enough for me. Cool. So you can have nine recipes programmed into this thing that will auto craft items for you. And we're going to demonstrate that in a moment here. Um, in order to do that, we're going to need a specific type of grid to program and teach it recipes. And that grid is known as the pattern grid, okay? It's not too bad. We're going to need a grid, an advanced processor, and a pattern, okay? Um, and patterns are made like so. Not terribly hard to make patterns, all right? Um, so we've got that. We're going to want the grid. So in order for this thing to live, we're going to need one of you, and we're going to need one of you and let's grab some gold because we're going to need some of that let's get like eight of them is that cool you can kick along into these things so we've got our basic processors let's get these gold printed improved processors ready to roll uh we're also going to by the way have a crafter here but i'm not going to hook that up yet because that's going to dip us over the 80. okay so you, you, and you. There we go. Cool. Uh, I'm going to need two of those at least to craft my grid. We'll get the rest of the stuff going in a minute here. Cool. So pattern grid. It's going to need a grid. We're going to need a destruction core. Pattern grid, grid, check. Oh, so close, quartz enriched iron. In a moment here, crafting is gonna be a little bit easier for us. Nice, so there's your grid. And then for a pattern grid, we're also gonna need an advanced processor, which remember I made an extra couple of those. Nice, that goes right down here. You, you, and the pattern. Whoosh. And we've got a pattern grid, nice. This is how we define patterns, which we can teach um, this whole system how to make cool stuff okay so with a pattern grid here we now have a nifty little table right so this to work we're going to need patterns okay so let's get a few of them pattern check um let's get so we're gonna need more glass huh i don't have any glass handy we don't really have any sand either i would have expected to have more sand handy 
Can you give me some cobble? Stack will do it. We're going to definitely need a cobble works at some point in the future. Digging this thing. Oh, you're smelting. <laughs> derpy dyer is derpy. Sag millet. Thank you. All right. So we're going to need a few pieces of glass at least just to get this thing rolling, and then we'll move on. while this thing does its thing. Cool. So those are at least the two pieces for a pattern. So how do we get more patterns? Let's teach the program how to make patterns. So the first thing I want to teach you how to make is quartz enriched iron. So it's real easy. Um, you place your patterns in here, and then when you hit the button, it's going to encode the recipe, right? So this is what goes in, this is what comes out. And if you hold shift here, you'll be able to see the pattern inputs. Three iron ingots and one nether quartz yields four quartz enriched iron. Sweet. Uh, now I want to teach you how to make patterns. Cool. Um, and this thing is three glass, three redstone, and three quartz enriched iron equals one pattern. Pretty easy. Um, now that you're cruising along just fine. Wow, you really didn't make that much sand anymore, did you? I want a few more pieces of sand to demonstrate this with. Um, and we should have no problem getting that in a moment here. So six sand should be enough to demonstrate this with. And we'll probably be teaching all kinds of stuff to this system, so get used to this process because the more things you teach, the more automated your refined storage system can be. Okay, so basically we pop down here and we place the patterns inside the crafter. Check and check. Now the refined storage system knows how to make blank patterns, and it also knows how to make quartz enriched iron. That's good because you're probably going to run out of quartz enriched iron at some point, so now that the system knows how to make it, you're good, right? So if we asked for a pattern, you can see here that it's showing on here, um, craft. That means we know how to craft it, we don't have any. Uh, if we ask for one, it's going to tell us the preview of everything that's going to be required. So we're going to have to use three of our quartz enriched iron, three redstone, one pattern, and one glass. We hit start, and boom, we have it. Boom, check, done, awesome. Easy peasy. Uh, now what I'm going to do is also grab all my quartz and rich iron out of here, which we can craft, right? So if we say pattern, and we try and make one now, it's going to say it needs to craft a pattern, and it also needs to craft some quartz and rich iron. See how it says to craft? And it's telling you the raw materials that are available, right? Three iron, one nether quartz, glass, and redstone. So we hit start on that, and boom, we got our pattern. And our quartz enriched iron, we have one left over. Because remember, it requires three, and you get four per crafting material process, right? So how cool is that? Awesome, right? So we're going to put our blank patterns in here, and now we can teach all kinds of cool crafting stuff to this thing. Um, before I can do that, though, we totally need to smelt up some more glass. So we are going to absolutely handle that process right now. And we can put away this junk that we don't need at the moment. Sweet. Pretty cool, right? So we've totally got auto crafting going. So now that we've got glass, at least, you know, the more glass we get, the better. We can probably even teach it how to make glass out of sand, um, but we'll get to that in a little bit, more than likely. Nice. Little bits of sand here and there. And we're in good shape. So we'll let all this sand cook up into glass. Uh, we're gonna absolutely need some more patterns. Let's teach some stuff to another type of machine. Um, so what we're going to need to do is make like, can I make 10 of you? See, it tells us we're missing nine glass. We have 21 available, right? So if I wanted to make five, that shouldn't be a problem. One, two, three, four, five. Check and check. By the way, you can put speed upgrades inside the crafters if, if crafting is too slow for you, uh, but it's usually pretty good. So let's teach it now how to make the silicon stuff that we need to make. So these processors we're going to need a lot of, right? Um, so we're going to want to know how to make these things. This is a little bit different because we're, we're not just using a vanilla crafting table, like something that you could use over here, right? This is not how we craft these printed processors. We have to use a machine, in this case a solderer. Um, so we're going to pretty much teach a machine how to auto craft, and that's what we're going to do next. And in order to do that, we're going to need something from refined storage. I want to say it's a pattern doohickey, do, 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 uh, interface, relay, disk manipulator. There's all kinds of stuff in here. Processing pattern encoder, check. Cool. So processing pattern encoder. is going to require, that's that guy, 
That's what we need. One of these. Uh, we're going to need one of these. And we're going to need one of these. And then we can craft just no problemo. We'll need a couple blank patterns. So let's get two of the ones that we put up here. So this machine exists solely for the purpose of teaching recipes. So let's put it somewhere that makes sense. Um, we could put it right here. It doesn't actually have to be connected to grid power, by the way. So this is for teaching recipes that don't have a vanilla crafting recipe window. And the way this works is you say what items go in and what items come out. So for example, uh, with the improved processor, right? We need printed improved processors, right? I don't think we have any. So let's get a diamond, some gold, and some iron. Cool. And we're going to pop downstairs. And we're going to turn, oh, look at this. We're running out of power. We're in trouble. Power problems. Uh, let's, if I remove you, are we cool? 76 hours a tick. Nice. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm only going to want to craft, you know, a couple of these. What are we at now? 80. Definitely need to get power over here, but I will in like a second. Uh, you. And you. See how it's flashing all red because we're low on power? Isn't that cool? So we're going to teach a couple patterns about auto crafting other stuff. So let's get our blank patterns that we have. And basically the process is very similar, except instead of with this, where it automatically detected what the output was, in this case, we're going to go ahead and tell it what the output's going to be. Cool. Um, so I think our patterns went into here. Yep. So we're going to pop them in there. And then we basically say, if you give this machine a diamond, you will get out a printed advance thingy, right? If you give this guy a piece of iron, you'll get this out. And if you give this guy a piece of gold, you will get this out. Cool. Now these three crafting patterns are known to the system. Okay. But there's a little bit of a catch with this. Okay, so first off, we're going to want to hook this up here, and then we can put these patterns in here. We're 85 RS a tick. Cool. So we totally need to deal with our power situation at the moment, like 100%, like immediately is what we need to do. So let's take our solderer off the network, and that's going to give our power a little bit of a break. Let's run some conduits down. Ugh, I don't like the idea of running conduits all the way down here. How can I manage this? Do we have any more energy laser relays? That might be cool. That might actually work. We've got two energy laser relays. I should be able to... So that's cable running that way. Don't love it. Don't love it at all. Give me a minute to think. All right, guys, I think I've come up with a good power run line plan. So I've kind of rewired my basement here a little bit, and this should be good. Cool. So that should be feeding power into that guy. Nice. And everything should be cool. And both the power lines and the network lines are kind of running along the same pathway. So I think we should be good there. Uh, stone, please. Nice. Does that look cool? I like it. Uh, and considering we have power lines running like right here, I'm going to go ahead and hook this up and remove this thing. So now that this is done, I can rehook up one of my solderers and we should have no problem with the fact that we're using 81 RS a tick. No more worries and complaints. How cool is that? All right, cool. So now that we've got that up and running, let's put our speed upgrades back in there. And we should be ready to teach things how things work, which is cool. Um, the other thing I probably want to teach is how to make a couple other things, right? So in order to make these three types of processors, right, we need printed silicon and redstone, okay? Uh, now printed silicon comes from silicon in the solderer. So let's do that, silicon. Uh, we're going to need some, so let's get... Right. Let's get these out of here and we're going to sag mill up this sand. That'll get us some of the silicon we need. Okay. Um, so we're going to basically tell it. Let's get shift click clears the pattern window, by the way. Solderer. Check. Oh, we've already got printed silicon. Okay, cool. 
So we'll come over to this thing and we'll say, hey, you know how to make stuff? Here we go. Um, by the way, you can specify uh, the, the, the amounts of items that go in and out, which is kind of cool. Because sometimes you might get like, you know, two things for one or whatever, or one thing makes two, right? So now we know how to make this guy. Cool. So now that we've got this, let's clear this stuff out and get our processor types so that we can teach the rest. Hey. You, you, and you. Cool. So that's going to require two more patterns. So let's get a few more of those. Can I get like five more? Is that cool? Nice. Okay. So we're going to say uh, one of you. One redstone, and this makes this. Cool. Uh, now, if I just replace this with this guy, I can say it makes this. And if I replaced it with this guy, I can say that it makes the basic processor. Cool. Now we've taught this thing how to make each type of processor, right? And all the prerequisites for it. So what I should now be able to do, okay? Let's make sure that we don't have any printed basic processors in the system, right? So everything is ready to be crafted, right? There's not even silicon in here, okay? So watch what happens when we request things. I'm going to request a, uh, let's do the basic one, right? So a basic processor, right? If I hit start here, it's missing some silicons, let's put some in there. And then we'll try that again, start. So it knows it needs to craft printed silicon. It knows to, to craft this, it needs to craft this. Everything else is available. Let's hit start and see what happens. So this thing just made the printed silicon. Now it's a little bit stuck. So what happened? Um, the trick with machines is when you're auto crafting with them, you also have to export from the machine. So we need something to suck that item out of there. And for that, we're gonna use an import bus, okay? And that'll just import it back into the system. So that's something you're always going to need to know to do, right? So for that, we're going to need a destruction core and an import bus. Cool. And if memory serves me correctly, we want to tap into the bottom of this thing. And that should suck that item in. So now we've fulfilled the crafting request. It's got all the items it needs, and it made that basic processor, dude. And we can see it's there ready for me to have. Awesome, right? Cool. So we've just managed to auto craft all the components that this solderer can make. And it's nice and smart. And if it, if it knows it needs, you know, the silicon first, it's going to make the silicon before it can make anything else. Totally awesome, right? Loving it. All right. So the next phase of this project uh, is I want to automate those crystallized seeds. Um, so remember for that, we basically need to get uh, seeds from over here. Hello, seeds. Let's get like a stack of you. Oh, you, sir, are starting to get to the point where you're filling up as well. We have a lot of things. Nice. We're going to have to, I'm going to upgrade that drawer at some point. I think that point is now because I don't want this to go on for any longer than it already has. Boom. Um, definitely need to like void upgrades. Let's look at how many pearls we've got. I want to stack yeah, just because I'm probably going to need them in a minute. Um, so what I'm going to make is the following. Um, oh, I already have a stack or I already got a stack. Cool. So. What we want to do is drop items onto the ground and then have the laser activate itself and then only activate when there's items sitting there waiting to be activated and then suck up the items from the world into some kind of inventory that we can filter because we want to make sure that we don't suck up the item like redstone, for example, right? So here's the process, right? Remember this thing? It's basically, we want to drop item on ground. Once the item is detected, we activate the laser. That item is the one that will get sucked up, not the original redstone, right? So we want to like automate this whole process. So let's do it. So for the dropping of items on the ground, I'm going to use the Batania open crate. Beautiful little device. We've seen it before. So nothing new to explain there. I want to detect when there's items on the ground, but here's the trick. We might drop multiple items on the ground, right? And we might get to the point where like, remember when we crafted um, quartz into the, 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 the green stuff, the prismarine, and it used up all the energy in the laser and it didn't do the whole stack of quartz? That could be a problem. So we want to not do pulse mode. We want to disable the laser when there's no item there and let it keep running as long as there's items sitting there. 
right? So for that, we're going to need to put it on deactivation mode. So there's really only two options, pulse and deactivate. Deactivate stops running when it receives a redstone signal. It's not that it runs when it receives a redstone signal. So we're going to have to swap this a little bit, basically, is what I'm saying. So let's come over to here, and we're going to get our atomic reconstructor. I've designated that this is the wall it's going to go in. Cool. Now it's in deactivation mode, which means it's going to keep running as long as it's not getting a redstone signal. So we need to give it a redstone signal. That's basically what I'm saying to you guys. So let's hook that up. We're going to need some redstone conduits, and I'm going to have a pressure plate here cool, that the items are going to land in. Um, underneath the ground, we're going to get our insulated redstone conduit, and we're going to set the up direction to in and out. And then what I'm going to do is have probably, I could probably do this like this. So now there's a redstone torch activating the constructor so that it can't run, right? We'll put this guy connecting to here on the, what direction is that? North face. We're going to do in out strong signal. So watch what happens when we drop an item here. Like for example, redstone, boom. Turns off the torch. Now I picked it up faster than the laser could activate, but watch what happens. Ta-da! And now the redstone is back on. Vanilla redstone for the win. And it's nicely hidden. So pretty cool, right? Even from the outside, you can't you can't see nothing except the, the laser there. So that's uh, step one. Step two is going to be automatically sucking up the right item. Um, so for that to work, I want to have something in the floor here. Because uh, I want this little thing to look nice. And for that, I've prepared the ingredients for a vacuum chest. Now all we need is a pulsating crystal, which is diamond with pulsating iron around it. I think we've seen that before. The vacuum chest is super cool, right? Um, because what it can do whoop, is where it's going to go. It can suck up items on the ground. And then when they get sucked into it, they go inside the inventory. That's what it does. Um, you can show the range here and see how big of an area of effect it's going to work on. We don't want that big of a range. We want the range to be one. We want it to be really small. So it only sucks up stuff inside this little box, okay? The other thing we want to do is make sure that it doesn't suck up the redstone before it's had a chance to be picked up. Uh, you should be totally working. Why are you not working? You might need to be a range of two, we'll see. So, where'd my redstone go? Oh, there, now oh, it's in the chest, okay, right? So we don't want it to suck up the redstone. It is working. So a range of one is good. Yeah, totally. We don't want that to happen. That's bad. Um, so we need to filter it. And luckily, that's pretty easy to do. We can use the same filter system uh, that we used with the Ender IO conduits, which is these guys. Now, at some point, we will probably wind up getting um, more than five items in here. And I think we can put advanced filters in here. I hope we can. If we can't, we're going to have to come up with a different solution. Uh, this requires a Z-Logic controller, which is maybe I'm going to do this real quick. Let's get a couple soul sand, a couple gold, get those guys cooking in the alloy furnace in alloy mode, you and you. That should be a quick and easy thing to craft. Um, and then we're going to need a couple silicon and a zombie head. So there we go, Z-Logic controller, good to go. Used rice to make more paper, and now we can get the advanced filter. I just wanna see if the advanced filter fits in there, and if it does, I'm probably just gonna leave it in there. And then I'll be quite pleased. I'm pretty sure it fits in here, right? Ah, bummer, I had a feeling it might not. All right, we'll figure that out when we get beyond, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna whitelist the items that are allowed to be picked up. Okay, so now, check this out, right? Redstone won't be sucked up. Redstone, your crystals will. Sweet. So let's demonstrate how this is gonna work. I'm gonna take off my magnet ring for a minute because I don't want this to mess up, but imagine that this open crate dropped redstone. You might need a slightly larger range. There we go. I made it too, it's good, right? So it picked up that redstone crystal. Beautiful. So there's one more piece to this puzzle, and that is automatically getting redstone into there. And we're going to have to import bus off the vacuum chest. So let's go into the basement and clear out a little bit of inventory area here. 
All right, so I'm blacklisting diamonds and redstone instead of whitelisting what's allowed to go in there. So this should craft. Nice. Liking it. Diamantine crystals. What am I using these for? Why don't I show you? I want to make a phantom face. Dun, dun, dun. What do you mean now? Are you in power, diamantine crystals? Oh, you are. You stinker. Clay, 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 and light blue dye. Light blue dye. Uh, I'm going to need another one of these, please. Powered furnace. Crusher. Cool. Um, we'll figure out auto crafting of this stuff later. But we're going to want two of you and clay. And this auto crafting should occur properly. Yay! So I'm gonna use a phantom face on the crafter for this. How cool does that sound? You ready? Let's check it out. So if we wanted to make a phantom face, we should be able to now. That's why I grabbed those ender pearls earlier, remember? Uh, and then we're gonna want a crafter, which I taught the system how to make all the prerequisites for. Taught it how to make machine casings and the construction cores and the destruction cores. It should have no problem crafting all that. It might be cooking some stuff up down here, but I basically threw all those recipes into my crafter. I know, elevator uses wand. Cool. So now crafter is here, and we're gonna want some cables, some network cables. We might need a few more of these. So I'm just gonna grab as many as I can. There we go, you guys go away. So I'm probably just gonna wind up having, let's say, can I do it here? Is that too close? Or is that is that good enough? Let's see, I'm gonna need my energy face linker. I'm gonna link this before I run the cabling and everything. So I think I just right click this dude. The connection is working. Nice, eight blocks away. So now this phantom face is bound for item transport to this block in much the same way that the phantom energy face is bound for energy transport to this block. Awesome, right? So now I can plop my uh, crafter guy here. That should be good. Um, and then we just need to run some cables over to here, which shouldn't be too bad. I'm just gonna run these guys here and we're getting close to wrapping up point, but we should be fine. And I'll cover this all up in a minute. I want it to like halfway look decent down here, but not like super worried. I don't want it to be too big of a mess of dire wire, but you get the gist, right? So let's say that we want to teach this thing how to make those seeds, right? So let's blacklist the canola seeds. And I will definitely have to figure out another method of sucking up those items that I can filter more than five items because we're running low. Cool. So you picked that up, right? Uh, we're also going to want an importer. So let's get that ready. All right, so that'll just be destruction core, check, importer, check. Okay, so that's gonna sit on the chest over here. So basically we create a pattern that says one canola seed yields one crystallized canola seed. And then we get one of these pattern guys, check. This goes down into here. So now it knows you put the canola seed inside this phantom face, which is gonna relay it up to the item dropper and it's gonna get dropped, right? Um, and then let's come up. Where's my guy? There he is. So remember all blocks act as cables, so we can do this, no problem. We're gonna set up an importer on this dude. And watch what happens when I am now done with this build so it can cover up the rest of the glass here. And then we just have to get to that chest to set up whitelists. Let's say I want more crystallized canola. Ready? So what I'm gonna do is make sure canola's in the system. I'm gonna say crystallized canola times 10, please. Start, start. Phantom face is dropping the items onto the pressure plate. The laser's gonna zap them and the vacuum chest is gonna suck them up 
And then we're going to get canola seeds. How cool is that? What is up, guys? All right. I'm going to make 53 of these guys for the start. And look, it's just going to run. See it running over there? It's going to get lasered. See why the pulse mode probably wouldn't work too well? Pulse mode would not be working right now. It would be like, nope, sorry. I might want to put like a stack upgrade on that inserter. But aside from that, we're in good shape, guys. How cool is that? I like it. All right, wrapping up point, Dial 20 signing off. We'll come back next episode. We will auto-craft empowered canola using the refined storage system. And then we will run cables over to our area over there so we can insert refined canola and empowered canola and all that good stuff into those droppers that we need to. Uh, and then we're going to be in really good shape. All right, guys, Dial 20 signing off. Take it easy.